Good morning everyone. I am Ilam Bharati. I am currently pursuing my third year of BE Mechanical Engineering. Today I am going to present a seminar on the topic Chemical Machining. Before getting into the topic of Chemical Machining, first we have to understand what is meant by Machining Process. In Machining Process, generally we are removing some amount of material from the workpiece in order to obtain the final product. So depending upon the type of energy source which we are utilizing for the removal of the material, we can classify the machining process into two types namely conventional machining process and non-conventional machining process. In conventional machining process, we generally utilize mechanical energy to remove the material from the workpiece. In non-conventional machining process, we utilize other sources of energy such as electrical energy, laser and chemical energy to remove the workpiece. So chemical machining is one of the non-traditional machining process and in chemical machining we are utilizing a chemical solution called the HN to remove the material from the workpiece. So, on, uh, further we have a specialized process of chemical machining called the photochemical machining. In this seminar, we are going to discuss about these two processes. Before getting into the steps which, we are, which are involved in chemical machining, first we have to understand the principle of chemical machining. So, the principle of chemical machining is nothing but uh, due to the chemical action of the HN solution upon the workpiece material, the material gets eroded and so that we can obtain the desired pattern or shape of the final product. So, uh, we have to control the chemical reaction of the HN, material, HN solution upon the workpiece material. So, in order to control and harness this reaction, we are going to use a resistive material called the mask and material and we are going to prepare a mask upon the workpiece material and we are going to control this chemical machining process. So, the definition of mask is nothing but mask is a uh, resistive layer applied upon the workpiece material and it controls the controls or hinders the reaction between the workpiece material and the chemical agent solution thus leading to the uh, thus leading uh, thus leading us to get the desired shape of the final product so mask is a resistive 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 substance to the agent solution and it does not react with it and it protects the workpiece material from its reaction so the let us discuss about the procedure involved in chemical machining process. The first step involved in chemical machining process is that the workpiece should be properly cleansed because we are going to apply the masking material upon the workpiece surface. So if there are obscurities or impurities present on the workpiece surface, then the masking material cannot properly adhere to the workpiece surface resulting in the formation of cracks or uh, uh, irregular contours during the, while, while, during the time when the process proceeds. If, uh, if such a, such a disasters happen, then the process will be uh, will end up in vain. So it will be a utter loss. So we have to be careful in cleaning the workpiece surface so that uh, the masking material gets properly other to the workpiece material. Then uh, after cleaning, we have to apply the mask upon the workpiece material and we have to uh, peel off the uh, uh, masking material in the un in the unwanted positions. First, initially we will cover the entire workpiece material with mask, then we will peel off the positions uh, where the masking material is unnecessary so that the desired shape can be obtained. This is the second step. So the application of mask, initially we have to apply the mask. That application can be carried out in two techniques. The first technique is by using a spray gun. By using a spray gun, we can spray the masking material upon the workpiece. This is suitable for uh, small, uh, smaller objects and small scale industries. The other second technique which we can uh, which we which we can utilize to apply the mask is by using a large bat or a container containing the masking material. We are going to dip the workpiece into the into a larger bat containing the uh, masking material so that uh, when the when the workpiece is taken out, it gets completely uh, completely coated with the masking material. This is generally applied for larger products and in commercial applications. So uh, after application of mask, we are going to peel off at the required locations and we are going to uh, further we are going to take it for the chemical reaction with the chemical agent. So these are the steps involved in uh, chemical machining process. So uh, as we have discussed about the steps involved in chemical machining process, we can identify that the, uh, that the, that the chemical reaction of the agent upon the workpiece is the most crucial part in this chemical machining process. So uh, we have to uh, understand some of the basic terms which are essential in which are essential and which are which are fundamental in understanding the mechanism of etching so uh, we can we should though uh, there are three terms which are fundamental in understanding the mechanism of etching they are undercut depth of cut and edge factor 
So uh, as we can see here, this is a workpiece material. Let us consider that this workpiece material is immersed in a larger vat, uh, cubicle or a cuboidal vat containing the HN solution. So uh, let us assume that uh, it is a, it is submerged completely in such a chemical HN solution. So here the mask is uh, provided and here this portion is not masked. So uh, due to the action of the chemical agent, this portion of the workpiece material gets eroded and, and this portion of the uh, workpiece material does not get affected by the uh, HN solution because there is a chemical resistive material called the mask to protect the workpiece material. So thus the material gets eroded along two dimensions along this dimension and also the material gets eroded along this dimension also. So the extent up to which the material gets eroded in the y in the y axis is uh, termed as depth of cut and the extent up to which the material gets eroded along the x axis is termed as undercut. So these two are these two are the important terms and the third important term is h factor. h factor is nothing but a uh, constant which relates the undercut and depth of cut and it is simply the ratio of undercut to depth of cut. And the undercut is a function of three variables namely depth of cut, strength of the agent solution and workpiece material. Next is the selection of masking material. While going for the chemical machining process, the selection of the masking material plays a crucial role. We have to be wise in choosing the masking material. So there are some general considerations which have to be, uh, which, we, which we have to focus while choosing the masking material. Let us see about them. The first thing is uh, the chemical resistance. The chemical resistance of the masking material depends upon the thickness of the mask and layer which we have applied. Generally, thicker mask and layers resist the chemical action for a longer period of time and thinner sections uh, resist the action obviously for a very uh, shorter period of time. So we have to be careful about the chemical action of the uh, HN solution upon the material. So if it is more corrosive in nature, we have to use thicker mask and layers. And if it is less corrosive in nature, we can use uh, thinner mask and layers. Uh, so uh, and, uh, depending upon the properties of the material and the properties of the HN solution, we have to arrive at the optimum thickness of the masking material so that we can uh, achieve profit after the manufacturing process. Then the second thing is quantity of parts. For large volume uh, parts, we, we, we should be very careful in determining the thickness. Because since the surface area is large, the, a small uh, miscalculation in thickness can lead to uh, excess pending on the excess pending on uh, the masking material which may be costly. So uh, we should be very careful in determining the optimum thickness of the masking material while uh, manufacturing larger uh, surface area parts using chemical machining process. Then the ease of removal. Then the masking material has to be easily removed from the workpiece material after processing. It should not deteriorate the properties of the workpiece material and it should not also deteriorate the properties of the HN solution. So we have to uh, select a masking material which is compatible with both the workpiece material and also the HN solution. So next the required resolution. Here the resolution specifies the surface finish and the surface texture of the finished product. Generally thicker sections result in rougher surface finish and thinner sections result in uh, smoother surface finishes. So depending upon the application of the product, depending upon the area in which the finished products are applied, we have to estimate that we have to choose the thicker, thicker or thinner sections. If the product is, uh, if the surface finish of the product ha is, has to be smoother, then we have to go for thinner sections and vice versa. Then the next thing is methods of making the mask. Generally, there are three methods in making the mask. The first thing is cut and peel method and the screen printing method. The third one is photo resisting masks. First, the cut and peel method. The cut and peel method is, as we have already discussed, the cut and peel method is very, very simple. And, uh, uh, and cut in, simply in cut and peel method, we'll take the workpiece, we'll cover it completely with the masking material. Then we'll remove the mask at the unwanted portions. Then we'll take it into the, take it into the reaction chamber for a reaction with the chemical agent. Then we'll uh, take it out. Then we'll wash away the unwanted, then we'll wash away the remaining masking materials. Then uh, that's the final product is obtained. So it is a very simple process and the basic process. The second thing is screen printing method. Uh, in screen printing method, uh, it differs from the cut and peel method in one, uh, in one aspect. In cut and peel method, there are two steps. The first step is application of the mask and the second step is removal of the mask at the unwanted locations. But in screen printing method, we'll, there is only one step that is the application of mask but only at the appropriate and the required positions. 
we are not going to apply the mask at the unwanted positions and then later removing it there is not uh, two process there is only one process that is application of mask at the proper locations by using a mesh this is the second process the third process is photoresist mask the basic difference between chemical machining and photochemical machining is that uh, it arises from the type of mask which we are going to use if we are going to utilize photochemical mask then the such machining process is called as photochemical machining process okay let us discuss about the procedure involved in uh, creating a uh, creating a product using photochemical machining first we have to develop an engineering drawing which is essential for all the engineering processes then we have to uh, uh, after completing the engineering drawing we have to take the raw material that is the workpiece material then after obtaining the workpiece material we have to coat it with the masking agent or masking material we have to coat it with the mask and after coating the mask we have to apply the mm -hmm, the mask is uh, we have to apply the photo resistive photo resistive material the photo resistive material is applied on upon the areas where the mask has to be removed so uh, if the if uh, if the, so if uh, a particular location or a particular uh, uh, area of the mask has to be removed we have to apply photo resistive uh, photo resistive material upon that position and uh, the rest of the position is left uh, unapplied after applying the photo resistive material we have to uh, we have to send it to into a ultraviolet light chamber during this uh, action of ultraviolet light the regions where the photo resistive layer is applied those regions get removed due to the action of the ultraviolet light and the remaining areas remain unaffected so thus we have obtained the required pattern which we, required pattern of the mask which we intend to, which we intend to create so here in photochemical machining the manual or mesh or manual or robotic peeling of the uh, peeling or removing of the uh, masking material is avoided and the uh, ultraviolet light is utilized to uh, create the perfect mask after the after the workpiece leaves the uh, ultraviolet chamber it is uh, taken into the reaction chamber of the chemical agent and the, due to the action of the chemical agent uh, proper erosion takes place and the, uh, uh, after that uh, the workpiece material is taken out of the reaction chamber and it is washed the unnecessary mask and are removed thus the final product is obtained in, uh, in uh, the difference between the conventional uh, sorry the chemical machining and the photochemical machining is that uh, the method which we are utilizing for the removal of the unwanted masking portions in chemical machining we are utilizing uh, manual methods or robotic methods in photochemical machining we are utilizing an ultraviolet light to remove the unwanted masking materials so this this is the schematic diagram of a photochemical machining process uh, we can uh, we can see that workpiece is coated with photoresist coating and after that uh, it is uh, it is exposed to uh, ultraviolet light after it is uh, uh, taken into the reaction chamber and after that the unwanted mask is removed then the choice of agent then here comes the next step we have to be very careful in choosing the cho uh, in choosing the agent for our process because we cannot say that a, a single agent can be applied to all the materials available in this uh, engineering era engineering uh, engineering domain we uh, some of the materials are resistant to uh, uh, resistant to a particular uh, particular agent and some are not resistant so we have to be very careful in choosing the uh, agent while going for the chemical machining process so uh, the so what are the effects of the agent uh, there are uh, the choice of agent creates a significant impact on the uh, final product so first significant impact is that surface finish depending upon the type of uh, uh, HN only the surface finish of the end product will be uh, determined so we have to be very careful in choosing the type of HN then the removal rate for example uh, let us take that uh, let us take a mild steel uh, mild steel workpiece and uh, two uh, two uh, examples of uh, HNs namely HN A and HN B uh, maybe the HNTA may be uh, very corrosive in the case of mild steel and HNB may be somewhat less corrosive in the in the case of mild steel. So in a more corrosive uh, HN, the material removal rate will be faster and in less corrosive uh, uh, and in less corrosive uh, uh, less corrosive <laughs> HN, the material removal rate will be very less. So we have to be uh, wise in choosing that and the material type. 
some are uh, resistant to some of the hn solutions and some are not resistant so depending upon that we have to properly choose the hn solution then commonly used hns are iron chloride chromic acid hydrofluoric acid and nitric acid then uh, applications uh, at present chemical machining and photochemical machining process are widely used in aerospace application because the it requires precision engineering and precision manufacturing processes so aerospace uh, engineering domain is widely utilizing the chemical machining and photochemical machining process then the advantages of chemical machining process is that uh, the tooling since not we are not using the tools and the machine tools and the uh, cutting tools here yeah, the tooling costs and the capital investments are very less and the productivity is also increased let us now see a short video about the chemical machining process Here the ultraviolet light is applied. The proper mask is uh, developed. Here the reaction between the chemical agent and the mask takes place. And the workpiece and the chemical agent takes place. And the unwanted photo resist is uh, removed in this uh, area and thus the final product is obtained. So uh, these are the things which we have to so these are the things which we have to uh, know about chemical machining. So thank you for providing me this opportunity to share my uh, share share the things which I know about chemical machining. Thank you so much.